Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 9th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I wrote a brief diary today about logging in JSON using the Elk Stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana to aggregate logs. And that, of course, makes it a lot easier if you're using JSON. You can sort of bypass the Logstash part. And of course, you can also use command line utilities like JQ in order to easily summarize, sort, and extract data from logs. So I want to share a couple tricks to get some popular servers to log in JSON format and if you have anything to share please let me know. I haven't included a software like for example Seek or Suricata that pretty much out of the box will log in JSON format. There's only really much more you have to do. Well in Seek you sort of have to just flip a switch. So if you have any trick or some other software that I didn't cover here that's quite popular let me know. Google today released uh, Google Chrome 104 and this update fixes 27 security vulnerabilities and the update of course also affects Microsoft Edge. But Microsoft announced an interesting additional security feature that has been implemented in this version of Microsoft Edge. Users will now have the choice to select between basic, balanced, and strict security. And what this does is it will enable additional security controls for sites you visit only infrequently. The idea behind this is that users most often visit well-known sites. They trust that are unlikely to be compromised but if they visit a new site, it may be because of a typo or a link they carelessly clicked on. These sites will still work and operate just fine, but at least in the basic and balanced settings, uh, some of the speed optimizations will, uh, like for example, just in time compilers, will be disabled. And these are the features that are often sort of the root cause of some of the security uh, vulnerabilities. Now, if you're selecting the strict option, uh, then you may see uh, more problems where some stuff will not work, but in particular, the basic uh, version, uh, everything should still work, even on sites that you visit said uh, less frequently. There are a lot of controls around that. Now, most users will probably just select uh, one of the three settings, but uh, you can set up allow lists. There are some enterprise controls. You can sort of centralize the configuration. Looks interesting. And uh, well, if you run into any issues or so, uh, let me know how this uh, works for you. Uh, notice that Microsoft S Edge updates are published in sync with Google, not in sync with Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. Of course, that's coming up uh, today as well. And yet again, uh, we got more malicious PyPy packages to be aware of. These Python packages were discovered by Checkpoint's Spectral Ops team. I think they just acquired a Spectral Ops. Now, these packages will not necessarily inject malicious code into your projects. Instead, they will run malicious code as you install it. Whenever you install a package with a pip, there's this setup.py script that's being run. So uh, arbitrary code may be executed. You won't see a warning and uh, you may not even notice that this code is running. So be aware where you're getting your packages from. Now, they're coming from PyPy, the trusted PyPy. Python repository, but they're using the usual typo tricks and sort of uh, lookalike uh, packages in order to make you install them. So just don't make any typos. And by the way, uh, these packages use a uh, similar, the same command control infrastructure as one that I talked about, I think last week, that exfiltrated data uh, from your code. And back then, they were mostly interested in your AWS uh, authentication tokens. And Chinese research team Chihu 360 published a blog uh, with details regarding a new version of the Orchard botnet. This botnet takes an interesting new approach to creating domain names for its 
command and control function. Many botnets use what is referred to often as a domain generation algorithm. So every day sometimes they will create a new domain name that they'll use for command control. Then of course uh, the attacker will register those domain names and uh, it makes it more difficult for a defender to block them. But once the malware is analyzed, it's usually not that difficult to figure out what that algorithm is. And even in some cases, sort of uh, register those domain names or uh, to at least uh, block them or identify them as malicious. But in this case, uh, the hacker actually took a little bit a different approach. They're using the balance of a particular Bitcoin wallet in order to determine what the next domain name will be. Tricky part here, of course, for the attacker is that now the attacker knows what the next domain name will be at the same time the defender knows it. So some security companies, researchers may register those domain names ahead of time. What happens here sometimes is that, well, these domain names, at least the balance of this Bitcoin wallet changes so often it kind of becomes prohibitively expensive to register all of the domain names. The attacker just needs to register one of the possible domain names and will use that to retain access to the bots. Well, and uh, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.